What's good, Josh Shabora? I was back at it again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 worst WWE Elimination Chamber matches ever by Parts Fun Known. This should be a good one, man. Elimination Chamber hasn't always been some of the best that we've seen. There's been a few that have, you know, actually been quite entertaining in the past few years. The one I can recently think of is the one uh, where Bray Wyatt ended up winning the WWE Championship and uh, Kofi Kingston was that close to winning. Kofi Mania started really taking off right in that Elimination Chamber. That's the match that kind of catapulted him to the main event, honestly, of that uh, year's WrestleMania. Those were some solid Elimination Chamber matches. Um, but once again, the Elimination Chamber is always, you know, it's of recent years, it's fallen to, it's having its own pay-per-view. That's why the matches have not been as, I guess you could say, entertaining because of that. Because we get it so often, it comes off as not as exciting, then it's just being a one-off every now and then. So, this should be a good one. Appreciate all the love and support, man. And uh, let's get right into this bad boy. Beefy boys in a box. Beefy boys giving socks. <clears throat> Beefy boys full of rocks. Let's go Limmy Chambles. It's time for the Elimination Chamber. WWE's second best use of pods outside whatever scientific vat they grew John Cena in. Look at his mad body. No mortal parents could. In recent years, WWE have used the Elimination Chamber as a break glass in case of bad booking way of shuffling people into place for their WrestleMania endgame. And this year seems no different. Apparently, it's still anyone's game who's walking into WrestleMania as WWE Champion at this point well it's at least four people's guess i don't think it'll be lesnar or theory but bloody hell vince has done crazier things so who the I hope knows not. all in all reasonably exciting and while we're in the chamber mood we were thinking about the best elimination chamber matches ever but then we realized we already did that one so hold up let me work it put my thing down flip it and reverse it i'm adam hailing from what Parts unknown here are the 10 worst elimination chamber matches ever before we get on with the rest of the episode, I'd just like to say a huge thank you to this episode's sponsor. And honestly, I still can't do the this. name justice. 2003 Chamber Match was also number 10 on that list as well. You haven't gone insane, or maybe you have, I'm not your dad. The Chamber Match itself was pretty damn great with action mm -hmm. worthy of a top 10, but its singular floor is so fatal that it's awful enough to make it into the bottom 10 as well. Despite yeah. running through almost the entire field like a ham bulldozer with double ham, instead of beating Triple H and winning the big gold belt as he should have, Trips parlayed his groin injury in some awful shorts into delaying Big G's coronation for another pay-per-view instead conquering the unconquerable be this is when i was rocking with goldberg very tough and i really do believe they made a mistake of not giving him a championship in this situation he destroyed everybody i mean everybody he destroyed when my man kicked the damn pod open i think he kicked the pod open to get to Triple H, I want to say. I, w I think that was the situation. He just kicked open the pod. He punched it. Like, get your ass out of here. He speared Jericho through one pod. He destroyed everybody. This is when I was like, put the belt on Goldberg. But they never did at the time. They didn't do it till later on. And Unforgiven, I believe. But it's like, bro, why you just, you just give him the belt then? He was just simple to book. It's Goldberg. He destroys everybody. Goes home. I was okay with this, but you know, you know how that went. Beast with a stop hammer time. Wretched booking, the kind of bullshit finish that sours what's yeah, otherwise that a match definitely of ruined the match. Spots, confining it to the dustbin of bad Goldberg decisions, and that dustbin's getting pretty full. Number nine, Facts. SmackDown ECW 2008. Oh man, I feel really bad putting this match on the list, as it has quite possibly one of the best closing spots in Elimination Chamber match history. Undertaker going over the ropes, reversing Batista straight into a tombstone is not just a chef's kiss, but a French chef's French kiss. No, that was that's good. The rest of the match also has the great Carly, yeah. Finley, and Big Daddy V in it. So, you know, it's quite boring for yeah. quite a while. Batista and Undertaker are the two only actual people with a chance of winning. So they fight. Someone comes in. Batista and or Undertaker kills them. Rinse, repeat. It's not yeah. the worst thing in the world. Large Father V and the bad Carly are eliminated before they have a chance to gum up the works too bad. MVP takes one of the all-time great chamber pod bumps. Mm -hmm. Look at him go. And that last spot 
plot is a world ender. It's just otherwise quite weirdly lumpy, unremarkable, and lacking in star power outside of that teaster and Black Ranger chamber danger. Number eight, World Heavyweight Facts. Championship 2012. Stop it. You're you're wrong. I see you heading to the comments section to remind me of the Santino Morella spot in this chamber match. And yes, that one moment of wrestling wizardry where WWE ever so briefly had us thinking that Santino Morella would be World Heavyweight Champion going into WrestleMania. Cobra, kick out, all very lovely. The rest of the match, though, is just pretty boring. From mm -hmm. memory, can anyone else name the people in it? Let me help. Great Carly, Big Show, Real Killers Row already, Cody Rhodes, Wade Barrett. Like, don't get me wrong, it's not dreadful, which is a big gold star on Carly's report card. There actually aren't that many out and out bad chamber matches, but it's also 35 minutes Sheesh. long, with 20 of those minutes going by without an elimination. And it must be repeated Big Show and Great Carly are both in the thing, and they're the sunny and share of slow moving, poorly coordinated spots. I mean, unfathomably, yeah. the match starts with Barrett and Big Show. Of course, they got some boring chance. What are you doing, WWE? Daniel Bryan's right. Th he's right there. Number seven, mm -hmm. Raw Chamber 2011. When the winner of a chamber match is uncertain, good old Limmy Chambles is a wonderful exercise in potential swerves and rising tension. However, the dark and stinky underbelly of a chamber match is that when the end result is never in doubt, Jesus, Maybelline, Christ, it could be just half an hour of waiting for WWE to get to the bloody point. <laughs> One of the biggest offenders, this match from 2011's Chambles pay-per-view, to determine who'd face the Miz at WrestleMania? The answer to that question was, of course, it's, jo it's John Cena, isn't it? Yeah. Everyone in their shambolic mothball grandmum knew it'd be him, and no amount of John Morrison doing John Morrison mm -hmm. things can lessen that juggernaut of impending dread. Also, let's not forget that the match contains a bloody awful anonymous Raw general manager uh. spot where heel CM Punk's pod breaks, face Randy Orton exploits this, pins him unfairly, then the heel Raw general manager reinstates heel Punk, who was completely in the right. That John Morrison bit was choice, though. Yeah, who remembers the Raw Anonymous General Manager? Cringe. Annoying. Stupid. So there's that. Cena wins lol. Number six, WWE Championship 2010. See above re-crushing inevitability, only this time add an angle that really doesn't make sense and renders the entire match a bit pointless. Again, it's not dreadful. It's just a bit weird and a bit average. Cena is going to WrestleMania for the WWE Championship match. This thing we know to be true because the sky was still up and fire was still hot. Despite a subplot <laughs> of legacy being on the edge of implosion and Kofi Kingston doing fun jumps, there just isn't a whole bunch of meat on the bones here to justify 30 minutes. Cena wins with his terrible STF and Vince <laughs> recreates the Edge money in the bank cash in from four years ago only with Batista instead of Edge and with arbitrary old man shenanigans instead of a briefcase. Batista then softly fed big match John his big lunch John and was crowned WWE champion at a last minute bit of WrestleMania reshuffling that felt more random and confusing than shocking and unpredictable. Mm -hmm. Number five, the women's match 2020. Oh, I, I really want to like this match. It's such <laughs> a weird and borderline brave bit of booking, sacrificing an entire match's level of enjoyment to create an unfeeling big boss that simply doesn't care about you and getting your pay-per-view money's worth. And yeah, it did all of that, but f me running. This was an awful match to watch. The cast of characters is Shayna Baszler and etc. with the yeah. Queen of Spades demolishing the entire field. She kills everyone, including mm. Asuka, once the Empress of Tomorrow and now the Absence of Today. Shayna enters. That's the only thing I wouldn't say. They should, she shouldn't have killed Asuka. Everyone else, I get it. Get them the fuck up out of here because you're building Shayna. But Asuka probably, that should be the one person that give her some actual real, like, okay, this is this is someone that didn't lose in NXT. She didn't know what a loss was. She gave up the title. So at least give her some type of like, okay, Shayna gotta really dig deep for this one. But ultimately you do that just to still have Shayna not capture the title from Becky. Eliminate someone with a Kerafuda clutch, then again and again and again and again. Every yeah. elimination the same. Problem is, she eliminates the field, waits for Liv Morgan, eliminates her immediately, then has to wait for so long yeah. before Asuka can arrive. The fans just turn on the whole thing because it's awkward. And sure, yeah. it's complimentary to Baszler's threat levels, but super exposing to her as a performer capable of feeling endless minutes of nothing happening. And that's, that's another problem because it's like, if you're going to do that, you're going to have him pretty much just tap everybody out. She got to wait. Now the crowd's just sitting there waiting for you, waiting for the pod to open. So it's like, damn. You know what I'm saying? They should have 
probably booked it a little bit better. She can still beat everybody, but like close to the time limit. Just enjoy destroying them. You know what I'm saying? At least there's something to do because now she's just sitting there waiting to uh, put you in the in the lo uh, in the lock. Oh, I'm gonna put you in it too. Oh, I'm gonna put you in it. Like I, I get it. I understand, but the right person won. It just it didn't really matter in in the grand scheme of things, unfortunately. Thing. And then Asuka versus Baszler massively underwhelms when it yeah. finally happens. So very weird, almost brilliant, but ultimately a bad match to experience with human eyes. Number four, the men's 2018. See above, only this time the monster who makes everyone else look like a duffel bag full of rotten sausages doesn't even get the win. That goes to Courage the Annoying Dog. A lot of this match was severely great. It had seven competitors instead mm -hmm. of six, because sod it, why not? The roster was jammed in 2018. Rollins, Bala, and Miz start it off, and that's a lovely seven words in a row right there. Old Man Cena with his existential crisis is in there giving sad face and the most mournful of Wabu Doos. Elias was over back then and so was Braun who wrecked everyone, eliminating five out of his mm -hmm. six opponents, one after the other with running power slams. Once was fun, twice was also fun, three was concerning, four made the fans start to resent the fact that one of the best main event scenes in the world was being munched like a chocolate cake in the path of Bruce Bogtrotter and five was just, just taking the piss. No matter how open over Strowman was. WWE sacrificed some of the best workers in the company to make a monster for Roman to immediately slay. And he slayed yeah. him fairly easily. And so the stage was set for Braun to win the tag belts with a... Which is, once again, that was the problem with Roman's character. They did everything to make Roman look good instead of really logically helping someone else. They could have probably benefited more because at that point they were still trying to push Roman as a face. It wasn't working their child and for Roman and Brock to have one of the worst mania main events yep. ever. One or worse. Duper. Number three, the tag match 2015. To quote the great Sarah Lynn, that's too much, man. 2015 was a very bad year to be in Elimination Chamber. The Anus Horribilis, you might say, and I will because lol, Anus. Both chamber matches were really quite bad indeed. Both train wrecks for different reasons. First up, the tag team chamber match featured bloody hell 13 people and one bull. Get nice and cozy in those pods, boys. Hope you all showered. First of all, it had a major problem of inevitability. New Day had just been crowned champions, and via reasons of authority shenanigans, all three of them were allowed to compete in the match, get super cozy in that pod. It's an uncomfortable day. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Also, they entered last. There was no way they were losing. The rest is just a bit of a mess. Miss spots occasionally. It's heartbreaking to say, but Kalisto's big dive from the roof was timed really weird and looked mm -hmm. fairly crap, and the ascension ran wild. Sure, that might as well also happen. It was nice to see Cesaro and Kid, but other than that, a hard to watch jumble of bodies and teams, the yeah. majority of whom never set the division on fire. Number two, it was the too much going on, too, too much chaos. It, was, it just didn't work like they probably intended it to. It just Extreme elimination came off chamber. Chaotic. I mean, I guess it's technically a functional match, so that keeps it off the number one spot. I guess that's the most generous thing you can say about. Actually, no, that's unfair. There are bits of this match that work, but almost all those bits are immediately undone by some terrible nonsense. The chamber is full of weapons, but some of those weapons never get properly used. No one even went to the table for f sake. CM mm -hmm. Punk and RVD were in it and everyone loved them, but Rising Star Punk was the first one out of the hands of fellow babyface RVD. And everyone hated that. Test mm -hmm. did an amazing elbow drop from the pod, but the person he eliminated was RVD who everyone wanted to win, so everyone <laughs> hated that. The match ended with a babyface conquering the big boss, big show, but the babyface in question was Bobby Lashley and no one wanted him as the face of ECW, so everyone hated that. Mm -hmm. It's a main event so bad of a show that was so bad that Paul Heyman got legitimately sacked afterwards. When you hear about hardcore matches shortening careers, this isn't normally what people mean. Yeah. A tone deaf middle finger of a match, but still somehow a match, which at least makes it better than number one, the Intercontinental Chamber. 2015, great googly movie. I don't even think I ever watched this when match. a match breaks its leg and your shotgun is all out of shell, so it just slowly limps into the forest to perish in a glade. Barrett versus Ziggler versus Sheamus versus R-Truth versus Mark Henry versus Ryback for Daniel yeah, Bryan's yeah. recently vacated Intercontinental title, and the match itself started fine. I mean, by yeah, definition, I I it was a chamber match. full of mid-carders, but Ziggler was in there to flubber his ass around for everyone. Unfortunately, though, he flubbers a little too close to the sun, smashing into Mark Henry's pod, and the bulletproof plex 
plexiglass panel falls out of its frame and tumbles to the ground, oh releasing the world's strongest and then also most confused <laughs> man after a bit of fumbling where the ref tried to keep Henry in the pod before the ref then had to be reminded, oh yeah, no disqualification. Yeah. Henry enters before Ryback then immediately joins the fray of well, so it's all out of order. An entrance is skipped. Mark Henry's in there when he shouldn't be in there and he's just standing around while Ziggler <laughs> desperately tries to distract the crowd by bumping. Everyone else just walking around like Bambi learning to take her first steps. Just so oh, exposing man. as to how matches can fall apart <laughs> the slightest mishap. At one point, the match is just Ryback, R-Truth and Ziggler standing in the ring loudly discussing spots they need oh, to do. Poor no. Limmy Chambles. Poor wrestling. Poor everyone. And that's our list. I'm What's glad that? I didn't see this match. I don't ever want to see this match. That's awful. <laughs> Hopefully, this year's Elimination Chamber uh, matches are not that bad. I, I don't think it will be. I think uh, the Elimination Chamber for the WWE Championship, I do think it will be entertaining. I think it will probably be the best match of the night. I'm hoping it is because the people that have in it are pretty, pretty solid. So, I'm interested to see how that plays out. Comment down below. Let me know. Are you guys looking forward to the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view that's coming up in Saudi Arabia, man. Let me know if you guys are looking forward to it. And what is the match you're looking forward to the most? Are you looking forward to the Goldberg and Roman match? I don't know why. <laughs> but if you're looking forward to that one, let me know. Are you looking forward to the actual Elimination Chamber match for the WWE Championship? Let me know, man. What match are you guys excited for for this year's Elimination Chamber pay-per-view? But I appreciate all the love and support. Roll to 70K. Appreciate y'all keeping me. See y'all next week. Peace.